In this introduction to literature, we'll talk about um, some different elements in literature and also some different beginning vocabulary words to understand literature, and finally, some reasons for studying literature. So first, how do we define literature? Uh, well, when we think about it, we usually think about when we think about the word literature, we usually think about things like Shakespeare or big novels or, you know, I don't know, an old man in a chair with a pipe <laughs> reading a big book. But today we can define literature in many different ways and in many different genres. And that might include things like poetry and novels and short fiction and drama, but it also might include ways in which we view and watch um, writing in active spaces or in graphic spaces like graphic novels or viewing a presentation in which uh, something has been created by an artist. So in this class, we want to talk about literature in the three major genres, but we also want to remember that we can view literature as any piece of art with writing that is central in which we are analyzing that meaning. So one of the terms in our text is canon. And a lot of the texts that we'll read in this course are called canonical texts or texts that have been defined as canon. And no, it's not a canon that shoots something <laughs> over the wharf. <laughs> Instead, canon is simply works of literature that have been chosen by readers and scholars and people that devote their study to the art of literature as texts that must be read, seminal texts. And the way in which we define things that go into the canon or canonical works of literature has changed over time and it, it will continue to change as uh, our tastes and our thoughts and our understanding of the world develop. So in past times, it might have been Shakespeare is canonical. Shakespeare is definitely still in the canon. But now we look at uh, different short stories from new writers as part of the canon or new poets as part of canon. So it's constantly evolving, evolve, evolving and changing depending upon who are the readers and responders to the art. In this course, we'll focus on three genres of literature, short fiction, drama, and poetry. And those will be the main focuses for this course for a variety of reasons. One, if we look at short fiction, drama, and poetry, we can cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time, which we only have a limited amount of time in this course. And secondly, this gives us an opportunity to hit big parts of the canon of literature of currently what are considered canonical works and also give you a taste of the kind of art that is currently being discussed and um, enjoyed by readers around the world. When we talk about genres of literature, we might add more to the list. So you could think of other things that you would add to the list. I mean, a genre of literature could be a novel. It could be a graphic novel. It could be um, a film. Film is often categorized under literature because great writing goes into screen, screen uh, scri uh, scripts, even uh, um, just like drama, where drama, if we look at a play, a traditional play, there is a script with dialogue, but there are also choices made by the director. We might also think about uh, lyrics to music as part of a genre of literature. But in this course, we'll start with the three main for our focus. So unit one will be on short fiction, unit two will be on drama, and unit three will be on poetry. So when we talk about defining literature, it is important to define what genre is. I've mentioned genre a few times, and the definition of genre isn't complicated, as are many of the definitions in this short lecture. Genre simply means categorizing things, putting things into a category. So in short fiction, you might have something that is comedy. You might have something that is drama. You might have something that is horror. Um, and then we also have subgenres, which are smaller genres off of a genre. So for instance, if you think of music, you might have 
um, rock music, but then you might have a subgenre like alternative rock, metal, prog rock. You see what I mean? So genres are simply categorizing different parts of literature, for instance, the genre of short fiction, and then creating subgenres, categorizing it into specific um, types of short fiction. So it might be um, a tragedy, it might be a comedy, it might be um, a narrative. So genres, again, are a way to categorize different pieces of art, and subgenres are smaller categories. That simple. So you might be saying, Professor Buzzard, why are we studying literature? I am trying to get my degree in nursing. Why do I need to read literature? I just want to be the best mechanic I can be. Why do I need to read literature? I want to be a doctor. Why do I need to read literature? I want to be a psychologist. Why do I need to study literature? Well, there are a couple important reasons. First, analytical skills. Learning to break anything down into parts is going to help improve your liter analytical skills. And that doesn't matter if you're using literature or if you're using a scientific paper or if you're breaking down studying how to do a proof in a math class. Anytime you get the chance to practice breaking things into smaller pieces, which is an analysis, then you're going to learn to keep practicing those skills so that they become second nature. The second reason we might st study literature specific is that it gives you an opportunity to examine different time periods and cultures and also examine different worldviews. I am really happy when I have a nurse or a doctor that understands something about people other than themselves. It helps you to connect to people, to relate to people, or even if you can't relate directly to them, to at least have some sort of understanding of where they might be coming from. And when we're exposed to different ki kinds of literature, we're exposed to different people and different cultures and different worldviews, and it allows us to expand our horizons. Studying literature also gives you an a, an occasion to analyze different writing techniques. So this will help you improve as a writer. You can see different choices that who we consider to be great writers have made to improve their writing in their essays and their fiction and examining those writing techniques and the ways in which they appeal to audiences is going to help you understand different types of audiences so that you can appeal to different audiences and also understand different techniques in which you might appeal to an audience's emotion or an audience's sense of time. And these are going to help you be different writers. And finally, I wouldn't be a good English teacher <laughs> if I didn't say, I mean, sometimes you study something art for art's sake. Understanding literature or studying literature or studying a painting or listening to music is part of the human experience. It's understanding and exploring different pieces of art, even if they aren't comfortable to you or something that you particularly like, helps you see art and from different eyes and different perspectives. And it's important to be exposed as humans to art because part of life is art and beauty. And um, sometimes not just beautiful things, but ugly things. And getting exposure to those types of things are going to make you a more well-rounded person, more well-rounded student, and help you to be successful as you continue your higher education studies. I hope that this has helped you learn more about um, an introduction to literature and some of the types of things that we'll be studying. And I look forward to studying them with you and really getting to know you this semester.